God. We want to see your kingdom. We want to see revival starting with us, oh God. That you come in your might and in your power. Anybody hungry for the Spirit of God? Just wave your hands to heavens and say, Lord, I hunger for you. Just come, take me, revive me. Revive this land, oh God. It's the desire of our heart. We want to see your kingdom come, oh God. We hunger for you like never before. As the deer pants after water, so our souls long for you, oh God. That you come in your might and in your power. Oh God, that's our prayer. That's our desire.
take us that if you if you will not be there with us we will not go if you will not call us that far we will not go that far sweet spirit of the living God we reference you we exalt you we magnify you we say you are good you are faithful and you are kind thank you for who you are to us thank you Holy Spirit in Jesus name in Jesus name Good morning, church. My name is Bumi, and I will be facilitating the prayer for revival. And when I asked the Holy Spirit what we would pray about today, he said it's time for us to be revived. The thing that he put in my spirit was that creation is waiting eagerly for the manifestation of the sons of God. That he's been, creation has just been waiting, and it's our time. It's our time to be revived. Romans, in another version, he actually says that the entire universe is standing on tiptoe, yearning to see the unveiling of God's children. God has been waiting for us, and he said it's time. And he said that the UK and the world is not being revived. We, the church, are. And then they will feel the effect of our revival and be drawn to him. And when he said it, I said, what do you mean? He said, revival is an increased spiritual interest. 
in the life of a church congregation and in the life of a society. And that increased interest then has a local effect. So it has an effect in Barnet. It has an effect in Brent. It has an effect in, in I don't know, Walthamstow. And then it starts to have an effect. It moves from London and then it begins to spread. It goes up the M1, it goes up the A1, it goes around the M25. And then he said after that, it begins to have a global effect because people begin to say, what's happening in the United Kingdom? What's going on there? What's, the, what's happening? Why? Because a church is revived. He said, if we don't get revived, we can't have effect. And that the revival is for us. It's not for the world. He said, the world don't know what revival is. He said they have never seen it before in that sense. So when we do it, they then say, oh gosh, something is different. So we only have one prayer point, And it's based on Psalm 85 verse 6. Revive us once again, Lord. Holy Spirit, set our hearts ablaze for the kingdom of God. That we might go out and manifest. Manifest in Brent Terrace. Manifest in Wembley, manifest in Southeast London, manifest in Brighton, manifest in Bristol, manifest in Birmingham, because there are certain people here sitting here today that are meant to go out from the church and begin to manifest on the corridors of power. The one thing he laid on my spirit as I was praying was that there are Daniel sitting in the midst of Jesus' house who are meant to be in government, who are meant to outlive the ones that are there right now, who are there to go and influence and begin to change things, to be the yeast that will begin to rise amongst the dough so i want us to ask god to revive us once again so we can take our place so we can begin to manifest the way that god has asked us to manifest i want us to lift up our voices and say lord if you have called me to be a daniel in government help me to begin to manifest the things that you have put inside of me if you have called me to be a business person to influence the marketplace revive me so that i can go and do that some of us have been called to leave the jobs that we're doing and begin to do things that are different and we're scared. But God said, when I revive you once again, you will not be scared. Why? Because you will begin to walk on water. You will begin to do things that did not seem possible. People will see you and they will wonder. They will say, what is it that she's doing? Why? Because she has been revived. So she can then go and have effect in, in, in the community. Our communities are waiting for us. Some of us have been called to pray concerning our schools. Some of us have been called that our only job is to intercede for teachers. Some of us have been told to be school governors. But we cannot manifest if we are not revived. So the Holy Spirit is saying, be revived. The Holy Spirit is calling us today to shout unto him, to cry unto him, to seek him and say, revive me, Lord. Revive me so I can take my place. So I can do my assignment. Every single one of us has been sent into the earth on an assignment, on purpose. God sent us here for a reason. For some of us, he sent us so that we can go and be doctors, to birth children, to birth his generals. For some of us, he has called us to be midwives. For some of us, he has called us to be engineers so that we can change the structure of society. Some of us are spiritual engineers. Some of us are physical engineers. But he said, come, come, seek me. Let me revive you so you can manifest. Let your fire fall, Holy Spirit. Let your fire fall. Father, we don't want to do life the same again. We want to be revived. We want to be stirred in our spirit. We want to be stirred in our spirit. We want to fulfill that which you have called us to. We want to do what you have sent us to do. Lord God, oh Holy Spirit, help us. Holy Spirit, help us. Oh yes.
And before we pray, and we will pray, I'm going to encourage everybody to remember that the Bible says that faith without works is dead. So even though we're praying for the persecuted church, I'm going to encourage you to look at what you can do to support. There are a number of organizations that are raising funds that go towards places like this. One of them is um, persecution.org. And there are a number of projects that you can support and they've got a list of different things that you can do. So in addition to your prayer, I'm going to encourage you to please, please, please look at sites like this, look at Open Doors. There are lots of information on things that you can do to support. But when it comes to prayer for persecution, personally, I've always prayed that God would stop the persecution, that he would intervene. And we will continue to pray that. I always have this image of him just coming down and just blasting the whole place open. But what opened my eyes to a different side of it was something I came across a few days ago. And it was talking about persecution in China, where persecution is actually on the rise. And it says, when asked, one of the Chinese partners where persecution is on the rise, said the prayer of Chinese believers is not that the persecution would stop, but that they would have the strength to remain faithful. And so that's what we're going to pray for today because it's actually amazing when you see what's happening in places where they have underground churches. There are people who know that it is very likely that their lives are going to be taken from them and they go in willingly. So we're going to pray for them to be strengthened. But what we're going to do is we're going to split ourselves for efficiency. So the first column here to my left, I'm going to ask you to pray that the people who are being persecuted will feel comforted and encouraged by God. This column here where Pastor Agu is, can I please ask that you pray that the persecutors will come to know Christ. All those who are persecuting will come to know Christ. This second col third column where Pastor Ayo is, can I please ask that you pray that despite the persecution, the church will be strengthened and continue to grow in these places where persecution exists. And the final column on my right, can I ask that you pray that all believers in these places will have access to God's word because that's one of the things that is very critical for them. A lot of them don't have access to God's word. We don't have much time. Can I please ask that you pray? Father, we come before you this morning. We stand with our brothers and sisters all across the world. And we know, Father, that nothing escapes your notice. Nothing escapes your awareness. Father, you have said in your word that nothing, neither persecution nor stress, nor anything that is in heaven above, nor death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, nothing can separate us from your love. For your sake, people, Father, are being killed every day. They are being slaughtered like sheep. And even in death, nothing can separate them. So, Father, we are praying today for strength for every single person who is undergoing persecution. Father, I am asking in the name of Jesus Christ that in the same way you have been ministering to us here by your Holy Spirit, that you minister to those people, Father, and you strengthen them in their faith. Let them know, Father, that they are not alone, that you are with them every single step of the way, that nothing, Father, escapes your notice, nothing escapes your awareness. Comfort and strengthen and encourage them. And Father, we pray you have said we should pray for those who despitefully use us. You have said we should pray for our enemies. Therefore, we pray for those who are persecuting today. And I ask, Father, that you reveal yourself to them in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, every single person who is persecuting today, I ask in your mercy and in your grace that you reveal yourself to them. And Father, I'm asking that in these places where persecution is occurring, that the church strengthens and grows and it continues to do so as you pour out your spirit. And Father, I pray that your life-giving word will, give, will be given to every single person in the same way that some people have memorized the Bible, that you make it possible, Father, so that your word goes out to all people, that all may be saved. Our Father and our Lord, we thank you. We don't take for granted the liberty that we have in this country to worship you whenever we want. And we say thank you for that this morning. But Father, we also ask in the name of Jesus Christ 
that for our brothers and our sisters all across the world that are being persecuted for their faith, that you strengthen them, that you manifest yourself, that you reveal yourself to their captors and you continue to push forth the growth and the increase of your kingdom to the glory and honor of your name. Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Please be seated for seven years. My name is Caroline Newman and welcome to this week's Seven News. Spreading Christmas Cheer is one of our flagship Christmas outreach events here at Jesus House. This year, from Monday the 17th to Friday the 21st of December, we will spend a week at various London underground stations, handing out refreshments to commuters and spreading the reason for the season. But we need volunteers to help us. If you're able to offer one, two or three hours between 6 a.m. and 11 a.m., then please sign up at the SCC desk in the foyer. If you would like more information, then send an email to community at jesushouse.org.uk. Since 2007, Churches and Christians across the Barnet Borough have been offering a free festive hamper full of all the essential ingredients to enjoy a full tasty Christmas lunch. Christmas Lunch on Jesus is simply our way to celebrate God's gift of Jesus to the world. We are desperately in need of volunteers. If you can, please take the day off to help us pack and deliver hampers to those who need it. On Thursday the 20th of December, from 2 p.m. till 7 p.m., we will be building the hamper boxes. On Friday, the 21st of December, from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m., we will need help with packing. And on Saturday, the 22nd of December, from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m., we will be delivering the hampers to those who need them. We're also looking for monetary donations to help us to buy more hampers. If you want to volunteer to help, then please send an email to community at jesushouse .org.uk. And if you want to sponsor a hamper, then please go to christmaslunchonjesus.com forward slash donate. This week's episode of The Professional Show is called Connecting the Digital Dots. We invite Sam Bode Odeyemi, an IT professional and owner of the company MTCGS, onto The Professional Show as he shares his journey with us on how he went from being someone who had no interest in IT but then went on to become a successful IT entrepreneur. Join the Professionals Radio Show Monday and Wednesdays, 7 to 8 p.m. on Jesus House Radio. Jesus House Radio. Now we know that prayer is important to live in the abundant life that Christ promised his followers. Yet it is something many of us struggle with, juggling between work, family life, finances, and other areas of life. This means that it's sometimes challenging to include a consistent prayer life. Through the biblical prayer course, you will develop a regular prayer habit, build and maintain your relationship with God through prayer. This program is for everyone. You will need to register for this. The deadline for registration is the 31st of December. And to register, please visit www.rccgschoolofprayer.org forward slash apply. Your investment in this program and in your prayer life is £250, but this can be paid in instalments. Every marriage relationship needs nurturing. The destination for the next couple's weekend away will be Rhodes in Greece. The dates are the 3rd to the 6th of May 2019. 
If you book before the 31st of December, you will get the early bird booking fee of £525. If you book after the 1st of January 2019, the cost will be £550 per couple. An initial non-refundable deposit of £150 is required to secure your booking. To register, please visit tightknots.org forward slash event forward slash CWA dash 2019. If you have been at Jesus House the past few weeks, you will have heard Pastor Agu talk about the sovereign move of God that we have been experiencing as a church as we develop our relationship with God. To help us go further on this journey, we will be meeting on Tuesdays from 7 p.m till 9 p.m. at Jesus House. We will be spending time corporately in God's presence in this critical time of his sovereign move. Please save the dates in your diaries and plan to attend. Be part of this sovereign move of God. Well, Christmas is in the air. Please make a note of these dates in your diaries and plan to be there to be blessed. Sunday the 23rd of December is our carol service. And of course, Tuesday the 25th of December is our Christmas Day service. And finally, Monday the 31st of December is our New Year's Eve service. For more information on all of these events, visit our website, jesushouse.org.uk forward slash Christmas. Well, that's all for this week's 7 News. If you'd like to watch this again, you can do so on our website or our YouTube channel. And remember, Jesus House is social. We're on all the social media platforms. So do connect with us and engage with us. Our handle is at Jesus House UK. Well, thank you very much for watching and have a blessed week. house of the Lord. So each one of us should be glad right now, right? Okay, can we just put our hands together and celebrate God this morning, church? Father, we thank you. I was saying earlier that um, I was extra glad when I walked through the doors this morning and I saw all the Christmas decoration. It gave me that really warm, fuzzy, Christmassy feeling. Uh, the one that precedes all the food that we're going to eat over Christmas. But um, even more importantly than that, I was glad for a piece of news that I read in the course of this week, that a high street retailer, one of the toy company, a nationwide toy company, took a really bold decision to place Jesus Christ at the center of Christmas this year by creating a nativity scene in front of all of their stores in their shop windows and that, that, that my response was yes that is exactly where Jesus is meant to be at the center of Christmas isn't that right amen amen well someone else who's placing Jesus right where he's meant to be is one of our own a singer a songwriter an anointed worshiper right here from this house I'm gonna invite her to just come and minister what the Lord has laid on her heart for this season. Jesus House, make welcome. Kome Udu. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus is the reason for the season. Amen. Uh, the title of the song is Christ is Born and he is the reason for the season. This song was actually taken from the book of Isaiah 9 verse 6 and also Matthew 2 verse 11. Amen. Christ is born. For unto us 
A child is born unto us. A son is given, and the government shall be upon the shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. What pound is it all? What immeasurable love? was born bring your gold bring your man bring your frankincense let's bow and worship him without Jesus there's no Christmas He's the reason for the season. What pound is the love? What immeasurable love? Christ was born without Jesus. There's no grievous mass. There's no grievous mass without Him. Do you believe that? Without Jesus, there's no grievous mass. There's no grievous mass without him, without Jesus. There's no grievous mass. There's no grievous mass without him. What a is love. What immeasurable love, what any love, never ending love, infinite love, unfailing love. What a glorious love when Christ was born. What a steadfast love when Christ was born. What a beautiful love when Christ was born. What an amazing love when Christ was born. Jesus house without Jesus there is no Christmas there's no Christmas without him amazing come can you just talk to us about 
the journey you went through very briefly as in how God laid that on your heart and what message he gave to you? Um, I actually wanted to write a song about Christmas, but I wanted it to be all about Jesus because when we look at the world today, Jesus is taken out of the context and it's all about, you know, uh, it's happy holidays and no mention of Jesus. And I actually asked God, I wanted to actually write a song that is bringing you back at the center to say, listen, Jesus is the owner of Christmas. So without Jesus, there will be no Christmas. And as I began to pray about that, um, God just dropped the song and I just began to record it. Yeah. Wow, amazing. You know, I'm sure most of you are thinking, how do I get that? It was so powerful. It was so anointed. What's the Lord laid on your heart in terms of the distribution of this CD? Uh, the CD itself is actually free um, at no cost. Um, actually, um, uh, this CD is, whilst I was praying about it, um, God laid it in my heart to do something for, which has always been something that has been at the back of my mind, to do something for children with special needs. And so it wasn't really hard for me. And um, like every proceeds that go, every donation that goes from this CD is going to children with special needs in Nigeria. Wow. That's really amazing. Now, K Kome has actually uh, selected a couple of charities. There's a Cerebral Palsy Center in Surulere in Lagos. And then there's a My, my Child, My Treasure, my Child, Foundation. My Treasure Foundation. And what does that do, the, uh, that foundation? My Treasure, My Foundation is actually for children, abused children in society in Nigeria because there's a lot that go under that they, they don't talk about. A lot of children are going through suffering through one abuse or the other. So whatever donation that comes out of this CD today is going towards that so that those who are in the forefront can help to, you know, uh, help these children and give them a, a, a good life. Amen. Mm. Amen. Well, church, this is what we're going to do. We're going to jointly pray over this CD and effectively dedicate it, that it would do exactly what the Lord had in mind when he laid that on Kome's heart. Father, we just really want to thank you. I just ask us to please stretch our hands uh, and bless in your spirit language both this single as well as the author of it, um, Kome, that the Lord has used. Father, we're just asking in the name of Jesus that you will indeed cause this single, Father God, to do what you had in mind. To remind people that there is no Christmas without Jesus. To put Jesus back at the center of the season. We pray, Lord God, that as this CD goes into the hearts, into the homes, into the hearings, oh Lord God, of people around the world, that your spirit would accompany it, Lord God, and minister change to lives and draw a closer relationship, Father, between the people, your people, and with you. And so, Father, we dedicate and bless this single in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus' house, together we said, Amen. Amen. Please put your hands together and celebrate Kome for that work. There's going to be a table in the foyer at the end of the service. I'm going to encourage us to go to that table. Get the CD for ourselves, but also get it for uh, friends, family. Put it as part of a hampers you are planning to send out. Make a generous donation for each one that you take. And knowing fully well that that donation is going to go and change lives in places around the world that you're not going to reach this Christmas. At that table as well is the earlier album which uh, Kume released in May this year, Spirit Overflow. It's been a real blessing and would like to encourage you to make your way to the table after the service and get some of those as well. God bless you. Good afternoon, church. Uh, once again, I'd like us to appreciate the wonderful gift in the life of Kome. Wasn't that a simply wonderful, wonderful song? And you know, as um, I, I thought, another great song um, came to mind. It's a song by Andy Williams, and I'm sure a lot of us know it. It's the most wonderful time of the year. 
And you know, in my reckoning, Christmas and New Year is definitely the most wonderful time of the year. And somebody might say, why do I think so? I, I think it's the most wonderful time because, first of all, we've got the holiday that looms five, six days of sheer bliss. We spend time with family and friends. There are lots of Christmas parties. And by the way, we did have a blast, ladies, didn't we, on Friday? It was a simply wonderful time, wonderful time. The gifts, the food we eat, a bit too much if you ask me though sometimes. The pantomimes, the plays, the general excitement in the air. It's, it's simply the most wonderful time of the year. But I think oh, most importantly, I'd call it the most wonderful time of the year because of the main reason for the season. And that's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because in the words of Bonnie M., man shall live forevermore because of Christmas Day. And the season is, is unique and it's um, with you know, all the wonderful things, but also because it's a time when we reflect. It's a time when we look back over the year, the year that's you know, drawing to an end, the year that's coming, and we take stock. And you know, for some of us here today and watching online, it might have been a year of great achievements and happiness. A year where there were milestones, maybe a significant birthday, a significant event, maybe you got married, you had a baby, you got pregnant, you are pregnant, you bought a house or maybe you bought another house, you finished in uni, you finished a master's, a PhD, you bought a car, you bought two cars, you've got a new job, you know, you started a business, you've got a promotion at work, you know. Or you received a healing or an answer to a long-standing issue or spiritual growth. Maybe this year you were ordained a pastor, a deaconess. Um, you know, the list is endless of achievements and great moments of happiness. But also for some people here today, it might have been a year, unfortunately, of great difficulty. A year when one, unfortunately, went through a tra tragedy. A year where there was trauma, a loss of a loved one, a loss of a job maybe a loss of a long-awaited pregnancy, or maybe you're still waiting and believing God for a baby, a failure in an exam, a business that went into liquidation, a loss of an appeal, children that are losing their way, a loss of finances, health challenges. Maybe you felt this year spiritually lost and disconnected. Maybe you suffered emotional burnout. Or maybe you're still waiting on that spouse. Or maybe your marriage is going through challenges. Or maybe you're just still waiting for a breakthrough, for a fulfillment of the word that God has spoken. And you know, the truth is that also that list is endless. And you know, I find it interesting that this time of the year, which is the most wonderful time of the year when we celebrate Jesus, who came to bring peace and goodwill to all men, that is also a time, in the words of Dr. Charles Stanley, and I quote, that the hectic nature about the Christmas season can sometimes inspire more weariness, conflict, loneliness, and feeling of unworthiness. For overwhelming circumstances of life, a difficult year, a year where dreams and aspirations haven't been met, where there have been too many things to do, when life has been relentless and has not allowed us to think, when we've been exhausted by an unrelenting battering of life that leaves a person exhausted, tired, weary, and that sometimes could lead to despondency. And so in a time, in a season to be jolly, a lot of people can actually be really tired and weary. And you know the truth is that if we don't check that weariness and that despondency, sadness, a feeling of an underachievement can set in, a sense of failure, and it becomes a slippery downward slope. And you know what makes it even worse is that the enemy of our soul, the one they call the devil, whispers to our ears. He tells us lies that unfortunately you and I too often believe. And those lies can take root in our minds and our emotions and cause us to see ourselves not really the way God sees us. For the enemy li whispers lies, he says it's not going to happen. He says God has forgotten you. He said, what has happened to all your sacrifices, to all your prayers? But you know, to everyone here today, and to everyone listening online, who might be feeling tired, weary, and despondent, I have a word for you from the Lord. And that word is found in Jeremiah 31, 25. And I read the NLT version. 
For God says, for I have given rest to the weary and joy to the sorrowing. Or the NIV translation which says, for I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. The message puts it like this, I will refresh tired bodies and I will restore tired souls, says the Lord. You know, for God spoke those words of encouragement to the children of Israel who had sinned so much against God that after a while the cup was full. And so the Babylonian Empire came and captured them and took them away into captivity into Babylon. And I'm sure when that happened, they lost all hope. I'm sure they had numerous promises that they had heard through the years, numerous promises of what God was going to do. But when they were taken into captivity, it must have seemed like the end of the road. It might have seemed like nothing could possibly have ha happened. Like all hope was lost. They were, I'm sure they were weary. I'm sure they were faint. I'm sure they were ready to give up. I'm sure they decided to accept the status quo that they were slaves and they were always going to be slaves in a foreign land. And I'm sure the enemy told them that that was the end, that the God of Israel had left them, he had departed, he had forsaken them. But that was not true, like it isn't true today. For the appointed time after 70 years, God with his mighty outstretched hand delivered them out of Babylon. And the same way today, that God with his mighty outstretched hand is delivering one who is here today or is listening online, who is weary, who is downcast, who is tired, who is feeling like giving, it, giving up. For the same God then is the same God today. And he has given you and I so many promises in his word, telling us of his will for us. And today he is telling you and you and you and you and everyone listening online that no matter what you are going through and no matter what you have gone through this year, that this morning God is saying he's reviving and he's restoring and he's making us whole in Jesus' name. He's making whole every weary and every sorrowful heart. And somebody might say, Shola, how does God refresh a weary soul? How does he restore how does he revive the overburdened heart? How does he bring joy to the sorrowful heart? And I have listed nine steps in how God brings refreshing when our souls are weary. For you know, weariness happens to every one of us. And you know, you can look back over 2018 and say, wow, I had a great year. And I'm glad and I'm thankful to the Lord for you. But you know, the life we live is a life of mountains and valleys. And one moment you're on the mountain and the next you're on the valley, it, it happens to us all. It has nothing to do with whether we've been good or not. It has nothing to do with our good works. It's just the way life is. And so if you're here today and you've had a great 2018, the nine steps that I'll talk about, I'd like to ask you to keep them for the time when you need them. But for people out there, for those of us that 2018 might have been a struggle, might have been tough, listen to the word of the Lord to you this morning. For he has promised us this morning that he has come to restore and to heal every weary heart in Jesus' name. And so the first step is that God brings a refreshing to weary souls by convicting us of sin in our lives and drawing us to repentance. You know, the Bible in John 10.10 10 tells us that the devil comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. And the tool he uses to kill, to steal, and destroy is the tool of sin. For you know, sin has great strength and potency and power. And I always tell myself, never underestimate the power of sin. For sin has the ability to come inside into a human being, to make our souls weary. And once our souls are weary, it affects our spirit, it affects our body, and we're disconnected. And the, most, and the worst part is that it separates us from our loving Father who wants to heal our souls. But the challenge is that our God cannot behold sin. He cannot behold iniquity. He's a holy God. And simply put, the easiest way to ensure that God does not intervene in a life is sin. But you know, the truth of the matter is that as humans, we sin. I love that sentence, that phrase that says, to, to err is human, but to forgive is divine. And it's true. We sin. We sin all the time. We sin in our thoughts. We sin in our actions. We sin in our motives. We sin. But what is most important is that when we sin, we should be quick to come to God and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, forgive me. 
And the Bible says that if we confess our sins unto God, he is faithful and he is true to forgive us of all our unrighteousness and to turn our lives around. But we must be quick to repent, to ask God for forgiveness. Prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 59, 1-2 said, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that he cannot save, nor his eye heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your God. I found it insightful that the word says, but your iniquities have separated you from your God. Not from my God, not from Isaiah's God, but from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. And you know when I say sin, it often happens to us that when you hear sin, you think of murder. You think of sexual immorality. You think of stealing. But no, today I want to hone in on the envy, the jealousy, the backbiting, the lying, the vain ambitions, the pride, the unforgiveness, the gossip, the hypocrisy, the wrong motives, the small foxes that the Bible says spoil the vine, the little yeast that affects the dome. And I'm reminded of what Peter said in Acts 3.19, speaking to the people in the temple. He said, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. God brings a refreshing to our souls when we turn away from sin and we repent. The second way God brings a refreshing to weary souls is through his word. You know, the psalmist said in Psalm 119, 28, my soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. And the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. Cutting between soul and spirit, between joints and marriage, exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. There is tremendous power in God's word. You know, that scripture in Hebrews talks clearly about the surgery that God's word does. How it separates the soul and the spirit and the joint and the marrow. And that makes us realize that the word of God, when it comes into our being, it will restore our souls, it will make our souls whole. But for it to do that, it must be read, it must be studied, and it must be meditated upon. For the Lord spoke to Joshua after he took, took over the leadership of Israel, after Moses had passed on. In Joshua 1.8, he said, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall read and meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything in accordance with all that is written within it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will be successful. There is great spiritual benefit when we read God's word constantly and consistently. But an even deeper benefit and dimension when we study and meditate on God's word. And you know this is a great time as ever to get into the habit, and I say the habit of reading the word of God. And as we start a new year, there are loads of ways we can read the Bible. There are study guides and study plans that come out reading the Bible in a year. You start January the 1st, and once you're consistent by December the 31st, you'll be done. You'll have read the Bible over. Or you can choose to read the Bible by studying books. That's how I read it. I read the Bible in books. Or you can take topics. You can study on, 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 on righteousness, on holiness, on, on peace, on joy, you know. Just choose a topic and read. And then after you read to study, where you take a scripture, where you can take goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and you break it down word by word. Goodness, what is goodness? What is mercy? What is following? And you read it in different translations, and there's so many translations, and you read it from different concordances. And then the next stage is meditation. And there is so much power in meditation. For meditation is when you take a scripture, when you take surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I repeat it to myself again. I repeat it. I repeat it. I say it to myself when I'm having a shower. I say it to myself when I'm driving. I repeat it to myself when I'm in Tesco. I repeat it to myself when I'm, whatever I'm doing. And then one day, suddenly that scripture comes alive. Goodness and mercy. And it's no longer just words, but the spirit has infused it and it takes over your being. And you know, I don't know how many of us have watched War Room, the movie War Rooms with Priscilla Shera, amazing movie. And if you haven't watched it, I'd really recommend that you do. And I remember a part where basically it was about 
you know, her and her husband were having challenges and, you know, he was beginning to wonder. And um, she met this lady, this lovely, mature woman who told her to fight for her marriage on her knees in the place of prayer. And that woman had a place where she'd write all her scriptures that she was believing God for and pray them through and she called it the war room, hence the title of the movie War Room. And so Priscilla Shira goes home and clears her, her wardrobe and puts scriptures on the wall. And one day, you know, she had gotten a message, I think she had seen a text showing that her husband was about to meet this woman in some other state. And, you know, she sat in her closet and, you know, she was crying as, you know, sometimes you do, you know, feeling sorry for herself. Oh, Lord, please me. And she was really crying and, you know, snort and she was crying. And then she looked up and she saw those scriptures. And she started to read James 4, 7. Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And she read it the first time. And she read it the second time. And suddenly there was a combustion. It was like she, was, she became a new woman. She stood up and she sounded a warning to the devil and told him to get out of her house. And from that moment, things turned around. That's what meditation on the word of God does. And you know, I've experienced that in my life. You know, I, 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 I've, I've said it that if there was one thing this year that I know, this year was tough in terms of spiritual battles. And I remember some nights I'd wake up and my God, goodness, know what was, goodness knows what was going on. And I'd wake up and I'd pray and my husband and I would pray and it was just like, wow, what's going on? And I was willing to feel like I was a victim. I was willing to feel like I couldn't win the battle until one day a scripture came alive in me and I thought, devil, no more. Don't you know who I am? No more. The Holy Spirit brought a scripture alive in me and I sounded and since then to the glory of God, no more. And that's what the word of God does. But we must meditate upon it. The third step is God brings refreshing to our souls through worship. You know, I must confess that if there was ever a year again where I believe I have experienced the presence of God in worship, it's been this year. For in the month of October, as we gathered in the chapel for the upper room experience, as I would come some mornings battered and bruised and, you know, my emotions all over the place, so weary and just tired and I'd come and I'd sit down and I'd just sit under the worship and the worship was so beautiful and so pure and so it, 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 was, it was just lovely and I'd just sit down and sometimes I was too tired to, talk, to sing or to, to sing any song but I just listened to the words and I listened to words like he's a good good father that's who you are and I'd hear words and I'd, see, I'd, listen, I'd listen to songs like who is like you Lord among the earth Oh, I'd listen to that song, what a beautiful name, the name of Jesus. And suddenly, what I was going through, juxtaposed against who God was. A God who was indescribable. A God who had all power at his hand. A God with whom nothing was impossible. A God who was faithful, who was kind. As I thought on that, the weight in my soul would begin to lift. Issues and problems would lift. As the Holy Spirit would wash over me and my soul became lighter and stronger and my inner man became stronger. For worship of the Spirit, of, for worship in spirit and in truth will attract the presence of God. He cannot resist it. The same way he cannot come close to, to sin is the same way he can't resist but come to true worship that's done in spirit and in truth. You know the psalmist in Psalm 16, 11 said, you will show me the path of life. For in your presence is fullness of joy. And in your right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And you know where, there is God, where God's joy is, there is strength. As Nehemiah tells us in Nehemiah 8.10. That the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so we are strengthened in, we are strengthened in God's presence. Weary souls are made whole and strengthened in his presence when we worship. So are you feeling weary today? Are you feeling downcast? Worship. When you leave church, when you're going home in your car, if you're going shopping, whatever you're doing, worship God. Sing songs. And if you don't feel like singing or you feel like you can't sing, listen to Christian music. Worship music. Listen to instrumental Christian music. I often listen to a gentleman called Dapi T. Keys on YouTube. He has hours and hours of, of Christian instrumental music, and I highly recommend it. As he plays different topics, he has peace, he has joy. 
and he has hours and hours of it. And sometimes I'll just play it and go to sleep. And I wake up in the morning and my soul has been refreshed because of true worship. The fourth step by which God brings a refreshing to our souls is through prayer. You know, one of my husband's favorite phrases is that you must believe that we serve a God that hears and answers prayers. And you and I must believe that. You know, Jesus in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 said, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, heavy burdened, and I will give you rest. And he's calling us today to come to him, to speak to him, to bring our burdens, to talk to him, because that's what prayer is, talking to him. For the psalmist knew of a truth that we serve a God who hears and answers prayers. And that all you and I have to do is just come, just come. For he hears, for he loves you, he hears. And so the psalmist said in Psalm 61, 1 to 2, Hear my cry, O God, attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock, the rock that is higher than I. And so when our hearts are weary and burdened, when we are sorrowful, when we're feeling out of sorts or burdened, when we feel sick and tired and we feel like giving up, that we can't go on, that all hope is lost, let's pray. And sometimes we, not, we may not be able to muster a prayer. We not, may not have the strength to pray. I understand that for I've been there. There have been times in my life when I can barely mutter a prayer. But what I know is that our God hears a whisper. He hears a silent cry from his son and his daughter. He hears a groan. He hears a pain. He hears a silent cry. He hears, he knows. He hears a help me, Lord, and he translates it to what you mean. He hears a have mercy, Lord. He understands it and he translates it. I'm reminded of that song by Yolanda Adams that I'm just a prayer away. That's what God is saying to you and I this morning. I'm just a prayer away. For we read in Psalm 147, 9, he gives food to the wild animals and he feeds the young raven when they cry. And if he hears the raven, which is such a selfish bird, surely he will hear you. And I'm reminded where he says that not a sparrow that is sold for one copper coin falls to the ground and dies without his knowledge. And he continues and he says, but you, precious child, are of more value than many, many, many sparrows. So he hears. You are on his mind. He hears and he, and he knows and he sees. And he hears your cry for restoration of your weary soul. And he's here today to revive us. You know, I found personally also at times like this that praying in the spirit is so powerful. And I'd like to encourage us to speak in tongues, to pray in tongues, especially at those times when we feel weary. For when we pray in the spirit or we pray in unknown tongues, the Holy Spirit actually is the one praying. He helps us to pray. For Romans 8, 26 says, likewise, the spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. One of the names of the Holy Spirit we see in John 14, 26 is intercessor. He helps us to pray. And we see in Jude 20 that but you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, pray in the Spirit, pray in the Holy Spirit. In other words, building up your inner man, building up your inner strength, building up your soul. Ask him today to come and help you to pray and he will give you strength to pray. You know, when you start praying, it might be a bit of a struggle. Your mind, like I often joke, might be all over the place. It might be in Kathmandu. But just stay there. Just stay there bit by bit, bit by bit, bit by bit. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit takes over and you are focused and then you're praying in the Spirit and you come away from the place of prayer strengthened and your soul is strengthened. The fifth step by which God helps us he brings a refreshing to our soul through stillness. Or what is sometimes referred to as waiting on God. Because you know in our world today there is so much noise and activity. There's too much noise and activity. There's too much clamor. The pace and the noise of life. Daily routines. Checklists. Work. Things to do. Family that needs to be looked after. School demands work demands and the times we live in don't even make it any easier for social media and electronics add to that for electronic electronics are always going ping 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 i have my phone here i have to put it upside down because text messages were coming through while i was preaching and all these electronics and all these texts are demanding our attention and they're not just demanding our attention they're demanding our attention right now 
And if you put all this together, it has a way of grinding us to a pulp if we allow it to weary in our souls. And sometimes what God needs to do to get his work done, to refresh our souls and lives, is just to say, stop. To get us to stop. And so today I'd like you to say to your neighbor, stop. Stop. God is saying stop. The world says we need help from stress. And really what we need to do and what God is saying is that we need to stop and be still. And know that he is God, that he is in control. You know, I'm reminded about the story about Elijah in 1 Kings 19, 11 to 13. Where God wanted to speak to Elijah. And he told him to go and stand on the mountain. And it's such an insightful scripture because the earthquake came. And Elijah was like, that's God. And God wasn't there. And the strong wind came. And Elijah was like, God. And God wasn't in the strong wind. And the fire came. And God wasn't in the fire. And then there was a still small voice. And God began to speak to Elijah. So if you're feeling weary today, God is saying, stop. Stop running up and down, fretting, being anxious, worrying, stop. And just get quiet. You know, there's a phrase my husband uses that I really like. He says, quieten your soul and get still before God. For the Holy Spirit brings a refreshing when we slow down, when we get quiet and still before him, when we wait for him. And the prophet Isaiah gives us yet another promise from God to all those who get still before God and wait for him. In Isaiah 40, 29 to 31, he says he gives rest, speaking, to God, to the, speaking about God, to the weary. And to him who lacks might, he increases power. He says, though youths grow weary and tired, and vigorous men, young men, stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. The sixth step by which God brings a refreshing to our souls is as we encourage ourselves in him, in the Lord. You know, in, Psalm, in 1 Samuel 30, 1 Samuel 30, we read a story about how David and his men went out to fight against the Philistines. And while they were out fighting, the Amalekites came and kidnapped their women, their children, and took them away. And so David and his mighty men of valor came back from fighting the Philistines, and they came back to find an empty camp. And the men were, understandably, they first of all wept. They wept sore. And when they wept and wept and wept and couldn't weep anymore, they now turned around and decided they were going to attack David and stone him to be precise. Verse 6 says, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him because the soul of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Some translations say he found strength in the Lord his God. Or he encouraged himself in the Lord. And what does it mean to encourage himself? Or what does it mean to encourage yourself? Or what does it mean to encourage myself in the Lord? It means to consciously think about the thoughts that you are thinking. And ask yourself, why am I thinking those thoughts? And do they match up with what God says concerning me? And so I often imagine how David must have encouraged himself that day. And I have a feeling that he might have gone something like this. David speaking. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why are you so disturbed within me? Why, my heart, are you so sad? Put your hope in God. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. For you, David speaking. You, David speaking. You are my God. You are my God who delivered me out of the lion and out of the bear when I was a young man. For when I was a young man, you tore the jaw, jaw of the lion and you rescued a young lamb out of the jaw of the lion and the bear. So why am I downcast, oh my soul? David said, I remember when God delivered me from Goliath of Gath with a small stone. So why am I downcast, oh my soul? I remember when you delivered me from King Saul, when you kept my men and I in the cave of Abdullah, in the wilderness of Ziph, 
I remember, Lord. So why am I downcast, O oh, my soul? I put my trust in God. But despite the fact that Saul sought me every day, he could not find me, your servant David. For with the mighty hand of deliverance, you protected me, you delivered me. So why am I downcast, O oh, my soul? Put again my trust in you, O oh God. Again I say, put again your trust, hope in God. For oh my God, David speaking, you delivered me from the Philistines. You delivered me from Ashes, the king of Gath, and the hands of all those who hate me. You did it, Lord God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So why am I downcast, oh my soul? I put my hope in you, O oh God. I know that my God who delivered me from all these and many more, you will also deliver our families from the hands of the Amalekites. Why am I downcast, oh my soul? And we see that after David encouraged himself, the Bible talks about how strength came back to him and how clarity of mind and purpose came back to him and he gathered his men and they went out and they rescued their family back from the Amalekites. And you know, I have experienced the power of encouraging yourself in the Lord in my life. And it is so powerful. For times when life is trying to overwhelm and batter and bruise and weary my soul and emotions are all over the place. And then I remember this scripture and I begin to encourage myself in the Lord. And today, irrespective of how you might be feeling, how you might be feeling right now, we all have a testimony about what God has done. We all have a testimony about what God is doing in our lives. Remind yourself of those testimonies and encourage yourself in the Lord. Speak it to yourself, for God can do mighty things. We read about what he did in the Bible. We read, we hear testimonies about what he's done, what he's doing. We hear testimonies of what he's doing in our lives as a church. Encourage yourself with that, that if he can do it, he can do it again. And you know, I'm, I'd like to say that even if it is something that the world has never heard of that has been done. You know, at the start of this year, God gave us a word in Isaiah 43, 18, that I am doing a new thing. Do you not see? Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert so God can do it. Encourage yourself in the Lord that God loves you and he can do it. So why are you downcast? Oh, your soul, put your hope and trust in God. For at those times, I remind myself of God's goodness. I remind myself of God's faithfulness, his mercy, his loving kindness, his protection. Oh, how he has delivered me from the jaws of the enemy. I remind myself. I remind myself. I remind myself of his deliverances, of his healings. And he has delivered me and my household from much. I remind myself. I remind myself of his miraculous provision. I remind myself. And I encourage myself in the Lord. And I say, why am I downcast, oh, my soul? And as I encourage myself, my soul begins to rise and my soul becomes stronger as I encourage myself in the Lord. And you know, an interesting thing happens that as I begin to encourage myself, uh, then I begin to remember what God says in his word about me and I begin to speak. Uh, and I begin to say I'm no longer a slave to sin. Uh, that greater is he that lives in me than he that is in the world. Uh, that I am fearfully and wonderfully made that I am the apple of God's eye. Uh, that I am precious in his sight. And that the God in the midst of me is mighty. That he's mighty to save and mighty to deliver. And that the Lord rejoices over me with singing. And that the plans of the Lord concerning me are of good and not of evil. To give me a hope and to give me an expected end. And that I will fulfill my calling, my purpose in my generation. I remind myself, I encourage myself and my spirit rises up strong in the name of the Lord. For there is power in the word of our confession, our declaration. There is power to restore every weary soul. The seventh step is that God brings refreshing to our souls as we look after ourselves. You know, I heard it said that a tired body is a tired soul. For when we do not intentionally, and I use that word intentionally, look after ourselves by eating properly, eating a balanced diet, carbohydrates, fat, protein, vitamins, minerals, and not overloading on junk food, even though we like the taste of it. When we sleep enough, they tell us a minimum of seven hours, and I must say that's a work in progress for me. When we say, I can exist on four hours sleep, you can't. By intentionally looking after ourselves by drinking water, they tell us two liters a day. I'm not saying that I can't and I won't drink water, no. We intentionally look after ourselves when we exercise. They tell us 30 minutes a day, five times a week. 
and when we stretch. I'm not saying that I can't find the time. We can find the time. You know, I, 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 something happened recently and I realized that really you will find the time for what you really want to find the time for. Or when we intentionally look after ourselves by resting and doing things we enjoy, by relaxing, and not saying, I'll rest when I go away on holiday. For when we do not look after our minds and our bodies, we become tired, which easily leads to things seemingly becoming worse than they actually are. It's just because we're exhausted. We're going on empty. Our emotions are all over the place, and what the body is just crying out for is just rest. And so let's be intentional over this Christmas period and over the year coming to look after ourselves. Let's take care of our bodies, which are the temple of, the, of God. For they're not ours. Our bodies are not ours. They're God's. And we need to take care of them. And sometimes all that is needed for our souls to be refreshed by God is for us to rest. And the refreshing comes. For we must remember that we are not superhuman, even though the world tries to make us think we are. We're not superhuman. We're not machines. We're human. And we're not designed to burn the candle at both ends and move at full throttle 24-7. We are designed to rest. God rested on the seventh day. And the eighth step is that God brings refreshing to our souls through laughter. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 17, 22, that a cheerful, a merry heart is good medicine. But a broken spirit saps a person's strength. Or oh, according to the message, a cheerful disposition is good for your health. It's good to laugh. I really love a good laugh. I watch movies, periodic dramas and comedies that just make you laugh. I love movies that make you laugh. My husband and I laugh a lot. We laugh a lot as a family. We laugh at each other. We really tease each other. We laugh at life. And suddenly things don't seem so bad anymore. You know, at the Esther's Christmas party on Friday, there was a lot of laughter. And I was so glad. Because I, as I looked around, I, I knew a few women who had been through difficult times this year. And to see them laugh, I was so happy and so exci excited and thankful to God. Because I knew that God was healing and strengthening their soul and restoring their soul through the laughter. Bringing them joy and peace. It's good to laugh. And you know, if you look at life, there's a lot of things about life that are comical. You know, our son, youngest son, Sochi. One of his mandates, I think, is also to make us laugh. He comes up with the most, the funniest things. On Thursday, he was getting ready to go to bed. And then he turns to me and he says, Mommy, how old are you? And I told him, I said, look, so you know how old I am. So I said, he said, how old are you? I told him. He said, how old is Daddy? I told him. He said, wow, Daddy is five years older than you. That's illegal. <laughs> And you know when he said it? You know when he said it? I was like, okay. And I laughed and laughed and laughed. I you know it had been a long day, but I, I, you know, I could feel myself, you know, just by, whoo, yeah. And so I got my phone and I text his dad, who was in Nigeria at the time, that Sochi says, you are five years older than me. It is illegal. And then his daddy texts back, mommy, I tell your son what happened. So, you know, it was, just, it was just a nice, funny, you know, and so it was just funny. It was, and it was, just, it was just great laughter. Laughter is good for the soul. You know, science confirms what the Bible tells us time and time again, that laughter, humor, and joy are an important part of life. Do you know that laughter lowers blood pressure and reduces stress hormones? So laugh. Laugh at yourself. Let's not take ourselves too seriously. And the final step by which God brings refreshing to our soul is when we are grateful. Gratitude. You know, in a world and a generation where we are always being sold the next model, and especially at this time of the year, a better model, a faster model, an improved model, a stronger model. And we're given, we have sold the idea that for you to be happy and for you to be successful, and for you to be fulfilled, you always must have the newest model. And you know, if you're not careful, if you and I are not careful in pursuing the next model and thinking that I can't be successful, I can't be happy until I have the next model or the next status symbol in life, a spirit of discontent 
and being ungrateful can seep into our souls and that will weary our souls. You know, being ungrateful and discontent clouds our vision to a fact that where you and I are today, a thousand people would give their right arm to be where you are and to have what you have. And so that's why we must be grateful. You know, 2 Timothy 3, 2, where Paul was writing to Timothy, talking about the end times and, you know, some of the symptoms of men who would live in the end times. He said, he, he, there's a whole list. And in that list, one of the words is unthankful. That men will become unthankful. We must live a life of gratitude. For science and studies from Harvard, once again, confirm what the Bible tells us, that there's a link between gratitude and happiness. You know, the word gratitude is the Latin word gratia, which means grace, graciousness or gratefulness. For when we acknowledge and are thankful for all the many good things that God has done for us, the many blessings we have, the gift of life, the salvation, the healings, I'm always grateful every time I come to church that I can come to church not wondering if I'm going to be arrested or if I'm going to be locked up or if I'm going to be killed. For the ability to be able to worship in a wonderful auditorium like this, in freedom, I'm always thankful for that. Because there are millions, as we heard earlier, that don't have that. For being grateful to God opens us up to receive God's love and his restoration power in our spirit, soul, and body. And you know, when I think about gratitude, I'm always reminded about this, the story in the Bible, in Luke 17, 11 to 19, about the ten lepers. And Pastor Agu preached about it last weekend where you had 10 lepers who came to Jesus. And in the olden days, in the days of the Bible, if you were a leper, you were ostracized. You had a colony where you stayed. You dared not come into mainstream society. And so those 10 lepers, they breached that protocol and they came to Jesus and they said, Master, have mercy on us. And Jesus looked at them and said, go and show yourselves to the priests. And it was interesting that that showing themselves to the priests meant that they had been healed because when you were healed from leprosy the first thing you did was you, you went to go and show the priest show yourself to the priest so that they confirmed that you were healed and so jesus told them go and show yourself to the priest which means that really they were healed and as they walked the bible says that what they had in the spirit it manifested physically in their body and so their bodies were healed but the bible continues and said one of them came back who was a samaritan came back to say thank you and jesus was 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 in shock but where are the other nine? Why is it one that came to say thank you? And a Samaritan has that. And then the Bible talks about how the man was made whole. That Jesus said, go, your faith has made you whole. You know, the nine lepers, all ten of them were healed in their body. But the, but the Samaritan, the tenth person, he was healed in his soul because he came back to say thank you. He was grateful. And there's a restoration in our souls that comes when we come back to say thank you. When we say thank you to God. When we have a heart of gratitude. You know, Neil Donald Walsh said, the struggle ends when gratitude begins. And Melody Beatty said, gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. It turns what we have into enough and more. And as I thought about this, as I thought about gratitude, I thought that we really need to have a lifestyle and attitude of gratitude. Thankful to God. Thankful to our spouses, thankful to our, 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 our partners, thankful to our children, thankful to our friends, thankful to our work colleagues, thankful to that lady in Tesco who packs your bags, thankful to that, the postman who delivers your post. Thankful, always thankful to the people around us. And as I conclude, as a church over the last few months, we have been having what I call a mini revival. As we enter into, by God's grace, a deeper relationship with his spirit, his Holy Spirit. You know, when Jesus was getting ready to go to the cross, he said in John 14, 16 to 17, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper, the comforter, the advocate, the intercessor, the counselor, the strength, the standby to be with you forever. The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive and take to its heart because it does not see him or know him. But you know him. Because he, the Holy Spirit, remains with you continually and will be in you. You know, the Holy Spirit is a catalyst to enable us to walk in the fullness of these nine steps. For the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. He intercedes for us. He gives us his peace, his joy. And he will restore every weary, every broken, every sorrowful, 
and every downcast heart. And so as I close, I would like to encourage us this year, the rest of it and the year ahead, to develop an increasingly intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit of God, for he is the restorer of our souls. And so I'd like us to bow our heads. Please. For there might be someone who's listening. And you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You know, it all starts with Jesus. For he's the reason for the season. And he's the one, as John 10, 10 says, that he came to give us life, and that life is abundance. And you know, life, it doesn't matter what you've achieved in life, who you are, what you are, what you have, but life really, really starts only in Jesus Christ. And so if you're here today, that's the starting point of the restoring of souls, is if you accept him as your Lord and Savior. And so if you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, He's knocking at, he's here, standing, knocking on the door of hearts, of souls, and saying, come to me, come to me, and I'll give you rest. And so if that is you, just raise your hand, please, so that I know who we're praying with. For today and this season is as great a season and time as ever to accept the one who was born on Christmas Day, so that you and I can live forevermore. I don't know if there's anyone who wants to give their life to Jesus. Amen. And secondly, I'd like to make a call. You know, the Holy Spirit today is starting the journey in all our lives of refreshing our souls. And so today, if you're weary and you feel overwhelmed, and you came into this place wanting to give up and thinking, well, it's Sunday, I better go to church. That's what you do. No. The Holy Spirit had a greater plan for you. He came to restore your weary soul today. And so if that's you, I'd like you to come to the altar. For the Holy Spirit is here. He's here to make all things new. He's here to restore every weary soul. To strengthen and to make new. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. Oh, come lay down the birds. calling you if your heart is weary. If your heart is broken, he's calling you this morning. He is here to heal, to mend the broken heart. He's calling you today. He's calling you today. He's calling you today. You know, the Holy Spirit is here to refresh, to restore, to make brand new. He's here. Jesus said in his word, come unto me, all you who are heavy laden and weary, and I will give you rest. He's promised us rest this morning. In this season, in this season of goodwill and peace towards all men, he's calling us to come and to receive rest. He's calling you and I to come and receive rest. Invite the pastors and the deacons and deaconesses to please pray with our brothers and sisters.
our Father and our God. We are so grateful, Father God, for you're a good, good Father. That's who you are. And you hear us, oh God, when we cry out to you, oh God. And so, Father, we thank you for we know you have heard us this morning. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God, for restoring and strengthening, oh God, every weary soul, oh God. And thank you for the joy and the peace that comes with this season, oh God. We are grateful, oh God. And Father, thank you, oh God, for your plans and purpose for us, oh God. Nothing can thwart it or take it away, oh God. Father, we thank you, oh God. We give you praise, oh God, for all you have done in our lives today. We are truly grateful, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go on, give God a clap of it. Go on. Let's uh, appreciate Shalom for that wonderful message. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless you. Amen. You may be seated. God's wonderful presence. Amen. Uh, we just thank God for that message. Um, there's so many parts of it that spoke to me. Uh, she said, shared a lot about Sochi and it's true. He really has been sent to bring laughter to our, our home. He comes up with the most incredible things. Um, one of the recent ones was when I was talking to him about his mother putting him to bed. And he said to me, oh, that, that, that's not how it happens. She doesn't put me to bed. I said, what do you mean by that? He said, I put her to bed every night. <laughs> I said, what do you mean by that? He said, we get into bed, and she's telling me a story, and next thing, she's asleep. I've put her to bed. <laughs> I said, so what do you do when you put her to bed? He says, I sneak out and get a snack. <laughs> that boy is incredible. Praise God. Laughter is good medicine. And our prayer for you is that next year you will laugh more than you've ever laughed before in your life. That there'll be, the, on your left and your right, there'll be so many reasons for you to laugh. And the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Amen. Amen. Um, Shola ended by talking about gratitude. And, and we'll, let's end the year on that high note. Let's be grateful to God. And yes, it might have been challenging, it might have been difficult, but do you know what? God saw you through the challenge, God saw you through the difficulty. That's why you're sitting here uh, in this service, worshipping God. Amen? And you know, the, the thing with gratitude is a lot of people will say to you, but I'm grateful in my heart. I always say to them, it's not in the Bible, but actions speak louder than words. So if you're grateful in your heart, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth will speak. And your gratitude will show itself in your actions, in how you praise God, how you uh, extol the virtues of God, how you tell people about the goodness of God, how you allow yourself to be a blessing to other people's lives because you realize God has done so much for you. And an opportunity that always presents itself to show gratitude is when we can give. When we give to the expansion of God's work is a sign of gratitude. When we give so that those who are less privileged are touched, it's a sign of gratitude. And so we've worshipped God in many ways. We want to worship God with our substance. Out of what God has blessed us with materially, we come to worship God. Uh, some might call it a donation. It's a bit more than that for us here at Jesus' house. It is worship. We're saying, God, we're grateful and we bring another expression of worship, our uh, giving. And for those who fellowship in this local body, we use this opportunity to also give our tithes. In giving our tithes, we acknowledge God's sovereignty over the whole of our finances. We also give our tithes standing on His spoken word. You bring your tithe into the storehouse, he makes clear that he rebukes the devourer and opens a window of blessing. So with that attitude in our hearts, let's come with joy to give. Amen. And I just want to pray, especially for those who might be struggling financially, that God will make a way for them. 
Amen. And that for the rest of us, his favor will rest on our finances. That we might be able to do more for the kingdom of God and more for the saints in the kingdom. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We come uh, with the same attitude of sincerity and the purity of worship to worship you with our substance. We ask, Lord, that you will receive it, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name. We come, O oh God, with our tithes as we just, in obedience to your word, challenge you by your word to do exactly as you have promised to do in your word as we give our tithes. We use this opportunity to pray for anybody who is in this family, anyone listening online who is in a difficult place financially. We are asking for grace and mercy, O oh God, that, Lord, you will truly make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Father, we thank you and we bless you. May the work of our hands prosper, that we might be instruments to advance your kingdom in jesus name and together we say amen now with joy in our hearts let's rise to our feet as we give have heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like and i've heard a tender whispers of love dead of night but you tell me that you're pleasing that I'm, I'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by together for a good good father that's who he is that's who he is he's a good father to us amen please take your seats as we begin to bring the service to a close I'm just going to take a few announcements a few reminders the upper room experience continues on Tuesdays in the evening slot between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Uh, the Friday nights of soaking will restart in the new year which makes it all the more important to uh, rearrange your schedules to be there on the Tuesday evenings for those upper room experiences of course um, the last Friday of the month as we have done every last Friday 
there will be a mini night vigil here in Jesus house on the 28th of December so please put those in your diaries and let's come together in that last opportunity for this year before we hit the uh, watch night service and the church office will be closing on the 21st of December uh, and so anyone who needs to uh, transact any um, business with the church office please bear that in mind and on the um, talking about the 21st of December that is the same day when we will be uh, packing the Christmas hampers so if you haven't already put that in your diaries I'd like to encourage you to consider the three days that start from the 20th in the evening of that day we're going to be um, putting together the hamper boxes as in taping them and getting them ready the next day on the 21st we're going to be coming together along with our brothers and sisters from several other churches and we're going to be packing those hampers and then on the uh, next day on the 22nd the Saturday we're going to go and deliver them to people in their own homes and it's going to need you and I so I really want to encourage us to volunteer thank you for um, donating and sponsoring the hampers but then our work is not complete yet as the hands and feet of God we're going to have to take it out to people um, in their own homes and actually represent Christ to the people. Uh, talking about the uh, sponsoring of the hampers, we still need a lot more hampers sponsored. So if you haven't had a chance to sponsor already, or if you've sponsored and can do more, if you'd like to sponsor on behalf of your business, or if you would like to share the opportunity with friends and family, please do what you can out in the foyer there's going to be a table uh, where you can come and get a lot more information get some of the sponsorship um, envelopes and just really really be a part of it because it really is a privilege to represent Christ in that way the other uh, project that's happening over Christmas that you particularly need to be aware of is spreading Christmas cheer you saw it in seven news we actually haven't got a lot of people yet who have um, registered to be a part of that. But it's so vital that in those early hours of the morning, we can be there representing Jesus at the tube stations. And um, we particularly need drivers. Um, we're really short on drivers. And so even if it's just for an hour or two hours, whatever you can do, please make your way to that table in the foyer. And um, please just register your name for that as well also out in the foyer is going to be the table for uh, Comez CDs the single which is free but please give generously uh, for each one that you take knowing fully well that it's going to a very good cause and spirit overflow which was released earlier in the year is also going to be there at that table and uh, we're really grateful to Kome and her husband for all that they've done to make those available to us. And just talking about the foyer and out there, Dr. Obina, um, if you can make your way to the front of house desk, um, there's a message for you. So if you can make your way there at the end of the service as well. So we're gonna bring the service to a close, but just before we do that, I wanna find out if there's anyone who's joining us with worshiping here in Jesus' house for the very first time, can you just wave your hand at me from wherever you are? I see a hand at the back there. I see another hand. Please, if you're sitting around them, can you love on them? Jesus House, can we appreciate them? Okay. And um, in the aisles will be members of the hospitality team who are going to lead you to a reception that we have for you in the lounge. So... If it's your first time, please go with the ladies and gentlemen around you. And Jesus House, once again, please, can we appreciate them? Can we love on them? Can we thank them for coming to worship with us? To come and be partakers of the refreshing that God has sent to the family this afternoon. And thank you, Pastor Shola, for that really amazing word. Dr. Obina, if you're in the service, not to the front of house desk. If you make your way right up front, 
um, straight after the service and somebody will be waiting here for you. So church, I'm going to ask us to rise up on our feet. I'm going to, as we pray and head out into this blessed week that the Lord is ushering us into. Our Father, our God, we are really, really grateful. From the bottom of our heart, we are thankful for a God who loves us, who cares for us, who sustains us, who restores us, who refreshes us. Thank you, Father God, because you repair us by your Spirit. And as we go into the week ahead, Lord, we ask that you will go ahead of us, that you will keep our rear, that you will generate power on the inside of us, O oh Lord God, that will sustain us through whatever issues that life may seek to throw. I pray, Lord, that we would indeed be your ambassadors, O oh Lord God, wherever we find ourselves in the week ahead. We ask for your blessing on each and every single one of your children as we go into this week. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And Jesus' house said, Amen. Have a very blessed week.